It is now my pleasure to welcome Gregory Coleman of the class of 1991 to give this year's commencement address. Mr. Coleman is the CEO of Sword. Sword. He'll pronounce it when he gets up here. A fitness technology company that provides personalized, convenient, and efficient workouts to any screen anywhere. He has more than 25 years of leadership experience in both the public and private sectors and co-founded and led the company that he will name when he gets up here, from concept to a market leader in the digital fitness industry. The company that he will name when he gets up here is identified as one of the fast companies, 2017's 10 most innovative fitness companies and was also featured on ABC's Shark Tank. Mr. Coleman also is a senior advisor and principal in the Defense Innovation Unit National Security Innovation Capital, the venture capital equivalent arm of the Department of Defense. In this role, he leads the Department of Defense's investments in power and advanced energy companies. He is a retired Air Force Colonel who served on both active duty and in the DC National Guard. He is a former squadron commander and command pilot with over 3,500 flight hours and over 60 combat and combat support missions in the Middle East and Balkans. Mr. Coleman serves on several boards, including the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce, the Stone Ridge School of the Sacred Heart, and Leadership Montgomery. He earned an MBA in finance from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania and also holds a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineer from the United States Air Force Academy. Two years ago, he received MPA's Young Alumni Award, which recognizes leadership and service to others. Please help me welcome Mr. Greg Coleman. Good morning, everyone. All right, so it's Swork. It just means simply work. It put those together. So very easy. Very easy once once we get the phonetics down. It's fine. All right. So I'd like to start by thanking Mercedes, uh, Heidi, and Tom for having me here today. It really is a great honor to be invited to be here. Um, but I want to start by saying congratulations, class of 2021. It's crazy to think that 30 years ago, I was sitting in these same seats on this same campus, graduating from this same amazing school. Uh, just for context, uh, your upper school principal, Coach Strahazel, that's how I call him, uh, he was a fairly new teacher here, I think maybe in like maybe first five years or so in the school. Uh, I remember this uh, big, full head of curly blonde hair back then. Uh, you know, Coach Parizo was a, uh, was a steady supportive and reliable presence in the athletic department. Uh, your director of finance, uh, Julie Quadros Perry, was a student along with her sisters, while Vincent Williams, there in the back, the director of athletics for Lower Middle School, was a classmate and teammate of mine. Uh, so it's just great to just to be back here, you know, with my uh, with my family from my, my early uh, early childhood. But I tell you what I remember about commencement day. I remember that it was a blur. I mean, it just went by so fast, and there was just so much to process. I remember feeling mixed emotions. I was excited to be finished, but I was nervous about what awaited me at the Air Force Academy because three weeks after graduation, I was heading off the base of training. So it was kind of it was a mix. I was losing the comfort of being in this nice protective environment and literally going out into the real world to have people you know, yell at me as part of their job. <laughs> I remember looking forward to having fun celebrating with my friends. Um, but there's one thing that I do not remember about that day and that is who the commencement speaker was or what that beauty said. I, I, I'm sorry, I've got nothing. <laughs> but all I do remember is that that guy was in between me and being able to toss my hat up at the, uh, at the end. So my goal today is to just share some honest and hopefully relevant thoughts uh, with you so that maybe 30 years from now that this class will be able to look back and reflect positively on the message even though they likely will not remember who the message was. The first thing I want to do is talk about your dreams. Uh, yeah, I know you all have them, even if you don't talk about them. You may broadcast them every day. Uh, you may just tell your friends and family, 
Maybe you just tell your family. You know, perhaps you keep them to yourself for fear of how the world or those around you will respond to them. But that's okay, because I know the types of young men and women you are, and I know that you have these dreams, even if they're deep down inside. You're not unlike my class from 30 years ago. You're not unlike any of the 29 classes since then. You are just like every single class that has come between, and you are special. You are amazing men and women with bright, bright futures ahead of you, if you choose to pursue your dreams. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to nurture your dreams. Feed them, give them detail. Give them actionable steps that you can move towards. If your dream is to be a neurosurgeon, give that dream detail. Visualize yourself in the operating room in your scrubs. Imagine the part of your degree on, on hanging in your office. Imagine a day in that life and what it would actually feel like to be that person. If you want to be an entrepreneur, picture your first sale. Visualize in your mind, have a very vivid image of closing that first million dollar deal. What do you want? What color is the conference table that you're sitting at? What kind of car do you get in to drive away from the meeting? Who's at home waiting on you when you get there to celebrate? Maybe you want to be a social worker and you want to help at-risk families. In your mind, visualize the family you're helping. What color jacket is the child wearing? Visualize the look in that kid's eyes when she finally feels safe and happy for the first time in months. Give your dreams life, give them meaning, and that way you'll make them real. Because I'm taking you through this exercise because the human brain has a remarkable knack for manifesting what it focuses on. And I want you to focus on the small details of your dreams. Unfortunately, a lot of people focus a lot on negative things. And as a result, they manifest a lot of negative things in their lives. So stay focused on your dreams so that you can turn them into reality. The more detail you give them, the easier it will be for you to focus on them. Try not to end up as one of the masses who convince themselves that their dreams are foolish or unattainable because I'm here to tell you that they're not. But let me be clear, your dreams are not just going to show up. It's not going to be easy. And let me tell you what's going to happen to all of you. That has happened to all the adults sitting here in this, uh, you know, in, in this ceremony. And there's this four-letter word called life. L-I-F-E. Okay? And life is waiting for you, and it's waiting to punch you in the face at any moment you're not looking. Alright? But that's okay. It's okay because all of you are going to have the resilience to take that punch, to brush it off, and to be all right. There are two quotes that really come to mind for me on this topic. One's from, from, from their generation, um, and one you know, for the parents. Uh, the first one's from Steve Rogers, uh, you know, Captain America, leader of the Avengers. I'm a big superhero, but I watch uh, Avengers movies with my kids all the time. And I just happened that my mom's house last night catch uh, Civil War on TV. I was even reminded of it back then. But he says the same line in all his movies, right? What does he do when he's just getting pounded and just getting the snot beat out of him? What does he say in every single movie? He stands up, he composes himself, and he says, I can do this all day. And what does he do? He keeps going anyway. Does he realize that he might die? Yeah. Does he realize that there's a lot of pain in between him and getting to his objective? Yeah, but he keeps going anyway. And that's really what makes heroes so compelling, right? It's not how powerful or how strong they are. It's the strength, it's the size of the challenge that they overcome. And I know you all possess that same persistence and tenacity. Now, for the children of the 70s and 80s here, I've got you back. I'm going to pull a Rocky Balboa quote. Right? But I'm not going to do it in character because that will just be a bad look all the way. Okay? But Rocky said, you, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't how hard you hit, it's about how hard you get hit and keep moving forward. But I'll tell you that the class of 2021 may end up being one of the most resilient classes since World War II. I mean, look at the last two years of school. I mean, everything got turned on its head, and all the plans everyone had for you back in January of 2021 out the window. I mean, the world has literally felt like it's been on fire for the last 18 months. Uh, you know, we've had to figure it out along with the rest of us. How do you get college ready in the middle of a pandemic? 
in the middle of a pandemic while we're going through a period of unrest and reckoning. In the middle of a pandemic, while every politician in the world is screaming at each other. How do you differentiate your college application when SATs are no longer a thing that matter in your application? How do you learn over Zoom? How do you get yourself ready for collegiate sports when your two prime sports years are disrupted? The thing is, you all have already taken a huge punch from life, and arguably a bigger punch than most of us have taken 17, at 17 or 18 years of age. And how did you respond? You kept moving forward. And now you're here at graduation day and ready for college, I applaud you. So what I want you to do is I want you to take that resilience that you developed over the last two years. Remember it. It's part of who you are now. I want you to take that resilience and tuck it away because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. But just remember that you have it in you. But what I don't want you to do is head into the world timid or passive. We need you. This world needs you. It needs you now more than ever. We need your ideas. We need your idealism. We need your optimism. We need your passion. We need your compassion. We need your empathy, we need your hearts, we need your minds. I have two beautiful little girls at home, one headed into the fifth grade and the other headed into high school. When I look at their generation, the younger part you know, of this generation, I see so much potential and capacity for amazing things. When I look at your generation, but more importantly, when I hear your generation talk, I can actually envision a world where racism is unacceptable. I can envision a world where sexism is unacceptable. I can envision a world where classism is unacceptable. I envision a world where these things are just flat out not tolerated in any way. And if you want to feel optimistic about this world, all you have to do is look at the young people in it. But what I'm asking you to do is bring meaning to what you're doing so you can create and that we together can create the society that we all dream about. You know, I work in tech, and there's a frustration among a lot of us about where and how a lot of our best young minds in this world are spending their time and energy. You have some of the smartest people in the world trying to figure out how to keep a person on the website or how to make them scroll to the next post. Uh, you have people engineering, writing complex algorithms just to figure out how to wring a few more advertising dollars out of a naive consumer. Um, I don't know about you, but I have a problem with that. But let me be clear, I am a capitalist and I believe in capitalism. Now, the version that manipulates, you know, I don't believe in a version that manipulates laws and squeezes the little guy or keeps the outsider out. But I do believe in the aspirational version of capitalism with a level playing field where your access to opportunity is no longer determined by, your, by the zip code you were born in. We have a long way to go to get there, but I believe, you know, in working out in the field to try to create that world. Now, if somebody wants to become a billionaire because they're, uh, or if someone does become a billionaire because they're driving society forward, and they know how to marshal resources and productivity toward efforts that change the experience and trajectory of humanity, I'm a huge fan of that. I mean, the potential for outsized rewards serves as motivation to take on all the risks required and to persevere through all the setbacks. It's much easier to sit on the sidelines in safety than it is to put it all on the line. But if someone chooses to put it on the line, I'm cool with them doing well while doing good because you can't do both. So if one of you wants to one day be a billionaire, I hope you get there, because that is a big, specific dream, back to my first point. I just hope you do it in a way that leaves your fellow human beings better off. Do it by elevating others, not suppressing them. You can have both, and I don't want you to apologize for wanting to do well and do good. Alternatively, the thought of just quietly helping people on an individual basis is inspiring and fulfilling, and just lifting people up one at a time is what compels you to action. I applaud that as well. The truth is that society needs all of us. Society needs all of you. And I look forward to celebrating with all your endeavors, or all your endeavors. I'm going to bring this to a close by asking you to deliberately live a life of, pur life of purpose. But Greg, you ask, what does that mean? It means whatever you decide it means. You are all transitioning into adulthood. It's not my responsibility to tell you what your purpose is. It's not my responsibility to find it for you. I would tell you that it's not your parents' responsibility, but I won't actually tell you that because you may still need them to pay some bills or maybe the place to stay during the summer. <laughs> but I will tell you that it is likely you will have more than one purpose. Think about that. We can be more than one thing. When it comes to my family, I have a purpose. 
When it came to my military service, I had a purpose. When it comes to leading my company, I have a purpose. Purpose can be context specific and can change moment to moment and evolve over time as we grow in our lives. Now, I don't want you to freak out because you don't know what your purpose is today. You may get to be 20, 30, 40 years old before you figure it out. And your purpose will grow and evolve just like you are. But there are themes that follow you through all the evolutions of your purpose. Some people refer to these things as bad principles. Some people refer to those as a North Star. Many bring religious teachings and beliefs with them. Others just bring family values. What I can tell you is that the people who truly make a difference in this world seldom do it by accident. Be deliberate in what you do and do things that connect your gifts and your skills with the things to fill your soul. If you do that, you will be on purpose and you will do meaningful things. So, 30 years from now, I don't expect you to remember me. I don't expect you to remember my, my name. I don't expect you to remember my commencement address or anything about me. But I do hope that you will have lived your life in a way that reflects the spirit of Morgan Park Academy and the spirit of what I've shared with you and in a way that will make you look back and smile with pride. Congratulations, Pastor Tony.